And I invite you to stand in reverence to the Word of God and the Old Testament. First King chapter 17. First book of Kings chapter 17. We're going to start reading on the verse 16. First King seventeen sixteen says The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. We bless you with Doriel for this fellowship among us. Blessed be your name for your word. Complete your blessing in your hearts, in our hearts, in the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. Elijah was a prophet. And in the days of Elijah, there was a fome. Existia uma seca muito grande, não chovia por um determinado período de tempo. E isso trouxe escassez de alimento e falta de água. Water. And back then, in those days, God called Elijah and gave him a word. Elijah, you're going to stand up and you're going to walk through the coast of Israel, the, the territory of the whole Israel. And you're going to move out of Israel in another land. You're going to go to a city called Sarepta that belongs to the Phoenicians. It's a mixture of Syrians and Lebanese. It's a region of Syria. Because in that place that I'm taking you, you inhabit it. You're going to make your house. And you're going to reside there in the house of a woman. And the word says that Elijah did exactly the word of God according to all the instructions God gave to him. So he st stood up and he lived Israel. He lived the people of Israel and he moved to another nation. And when he arrived there in the limits of Sidon, the city of Sarepta, that means furnace or place of like smith work that place was used to to do metal instruments and tools those seven of furnaces because they start to do utensils of metal so when we take the the, the history of sarepta also talks about a place very hot so when you talk about a place like that, you, you, you remember affliction, pain, suffering. There was a place, there, there, there was several situations, circumstances of suffering and lack of supplies. And the prophet Amos, when he prophesies, a moment for the, the the human beings says there will be days that I'll send famine upon the earth not of bread or water but to listen the word of God so here God 
was showing a situation that occurred prophetically. It has a meaning that brings us to our days. We are living moments, not in the culture that we live, but not lacking of food, water, bread, but lack of counseling, refreshment, relief from the part of the Lord, the Word of God. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And he is also the water of life. He is the one that brings refreshment for our souls, consolation. He edifies and he sustains us. Servants, and, uh, daughters, and, and sons. As Elijah left the terms of Israel to go to the Gentile territory, God as well has moved us. And he sent from the eternity Jesus Christ, the greatest of the prophets, to inhabit an estranged land, to live among us, in our lives, in our hearts. The word says that the woman mentioned, she met the prophet by the entrance of the city and by the entrance there is a door and the door there is a prophetic meaning who is the door jesus is the door who go through the door who enter and will go and will find supplies so we're going to find pastures in the case of the ship it's food jesus is our food, spiritual food. So that encounter by the entrance of the city, by the door, the encounter that I had with the Lord, you had also, that happened by the door. The door of grace, the door of salvation, the door where the blood of Jesus was covering the blood of the Lamb, the door that God provided for you and me. The Bible says that she was a foreign woman, but God sent the prophet to the house of the foreign. Why did not God send him to someone from Israel, but to a foreign? family. Why? Because the salvation is for all the nations, tribes, and, and, and all the, the, the countries. So Bible says that when he arrived at the door, he found this woman collecting wood for fire. Wood talks about what? Man, the reasoning of mankind. So when you grab something at the floor, you kneel down, you bound down. So he, she was bent over and she's, she was looking for the things of this world, for the resources that the man find in the man's resources, depending on the mankind and the reasoning and the help or aid of the mankind. So she was also grabbing these pieces of wood for fire. Th this was the resource that she could have back then. And the word says that at that moment, the prophet, the prophet called her. So many times we are with our focus in the things of this world, problems, trials and struggles, trying to find a solution among the, the human things and the early things for our lives. And interesting that there is a text in the Bible that says, I lift up my eyes 
to the mountains where my help come from. So at that moment, that woman didn't have her, the eyes towards salvation, but she was looking at the reasoning of the natural understanding of the human things. So when he called her, and he addressed to her saying, we remember that salvation is act and process. There will be a day that the God will call you. Like the song that we sing, one day he had called to his light I walked towards. So there was a call from God for this woman. There is a call from God to my life, to your life. Many are the ones that are being called and when you accept this call, you call yourself a chosen one. Because you have accepted the invitation of God's pro uh, prophet, prophecy in your life. That woman was a foreign. She did not have the God of Israel as a God. So she didn't belong to the people of Israel. But God wants to make from this woman her people, his people. So he wants that that woman will be a servant and God being the, the, the leader and the conductor for her life. So the prophet called her and he asked her, bring me water. sounds something like easy but back then there was a drought remember the land was dry and the Bible says that when she left to bring water the prophet stopped her and say bring also a piece of bread and ask if she has water and bread and I have mentioned the meaning of the water and the bread So when she left to bring these things, when he, she, he asked her to bring those, she revealed to him her circumstances, the actual misery that she was going through. She answered the prophet, to the prophet, Hail, the Lord our God. She didn't say hail, the Lord my God, because the God of Elijah was not her God yet. But she knew where Elijah was from, and she knew that he was a servant of the Almighty God. So she said, hail your God, the Lord, your God, that I do not have any piece of bread besides one portion of flour and just a, a few oil in my house. The Bible says that the faith come through hearing and hearing the Word of God. And I remember I mentioned there will be days that there will be thirst of not the water but to listen to the Word of God. So that woman has a little faith. Besides, she was a foreign, she still have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil, olive oil. So you came to the house of the Lord tonight. You still foreign? Some, uh, maybe you are not part of God's project? Perhaps you did not accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in your life, and you're going through a moment of faming, lack of supplies, hungry and thirst of hearing the Word of God. Maybe you are desiring a refreshment that only the Holy Spirit can bring. But she had a little bit. She kept a little bit of oil and flour. She probably heard about the Lord. 
the refreshing that the Holy Spirit can bring, the rest that God can provide. So she still have a few of the flower. Sometimes you, you, you perhaps have a few you experienced for a moment that was still in your heart, in your mind, a little bit of oil and flour, a little bit of faith. And the word says, he is, here I am grabbing a few pieces of wood so I can eat and die. So I, I'm here and I'll use a little bit of what I have and I'll cook and I'll die. Because when this has finished, everything is gone. There's no, ho no hope. Sometimes man has an experience with God and he has a little line of hope. So I'll participate in my last meal, the last service. When the service finished, when I eat, when I eat this, a little bit that is under my the oil and the bread, I'll, I'll eat and die, me and my son. But the Word of God says, if you believe in Jesus, nor you will die and nor anybody in your family. Because the Word of God says, if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved, you and your household. Hallelujah. So we will understand that this, the understanding of this woman, the way that she think, it was the opposite of God's project. She didn't know the mystery, and the prophet was sent there to reveal that there will be a, there was a mystery, there was a plan of salvation for her life. Perhaps tonight you came to the house of the Lord and you don't know the mystery of God. You're not aware of God's plan for you in your house. I am suffering, I'm struggling, I'm in need, I'm afflicted, I'm anguished, I'm sad, I'm in pain, I'm suffering, and I have no hope. So Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Do not fear, I'll help you. And Isaiah says the same. There's no reason to be afraid. Do not fear. Go and do according to your word. Because behold, says the Lord, the God of Israel. So the God of Israel was being announced and presented to a different land, but this, the God is still the same. He did not leave Israel to speak in Sidon and Sarepta to another God. He left Israel because God sent him to a strange land to speak about the power of the God of Israel. We leave Brazil, for example. We, uh, we met the God of Israel, the God of, that created the earth and the, the, and the heaven. And here in America, in a strange land, we're still talking about the same God that one day approached to us by the door and revealed to us his project. A God that don't want me to die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The, our God never changed. He moved to another nation, but his God is still the same. 
if you live now and go to China, Japan, anywhere, your God is still the same. There's no change. Sometimes we move, but we don't move from the God that we believe. And his project is the same from when we met him in Brazil, and it's still the same here, now that we're here. Sometimes people move and think that God's project moved, changed. Do according to the word of because the flower will not finish and neither the oil. The project that one day God have planted in your life, which is the oil, the Holy Spirit. If you understand the prophetic, the prophetic plan of God in your life, this oil will never end, will never run dry. Jesus says here, Behold, I am with you today, Monday, Tuesday. No, every day of your life until the, the end of times. So he promised you always a companion. So that was the promise for this woman. The resources of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, the oil is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And the flower represents the bread, the word of God. And the prophet is the Lord God. So all the, the members of the Trinity was there. And she received that in your house, in her house. And the detail is, if she received the prophet in her house, the little that she has, the flower and the oil, but was something important that it was missing, the presence of the prophet, the one that will be able to multiply the flower and the oil. Jesus says something interesting. Whoever has the son has the father, but who does not have the son does not have the father. And whoever has the, the son has the son and the father. And then you have the Holy Spirit, of course. So what was missing was one person of the Trinity. She had a little bit of flour. She had a little bit of oil. But she did not have the presence of the prophet. The, now she will have the complete Trinity. That's why she was going through so much afflictions. And what the Lord has given to her one day, God sent Elijah at the moment to complete, to make her whole. The problem was not the oil. The problem was not the flour. And sometimes we blame the lack of flour. We think it's, it's not enough. Sometimes we think there's no enough study in the Bible. But when the project of God completes in our lives, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is together, present. The Bible says, In the bin, the flower shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, she accepted and she invited the prophet to her house. She believed in the word of God and all the resources that she have in her life multiplied to sustain her every day of her life for several days until the prophet leaves. So the blessings will be upon us, shower upon the earth. And here we see the promise of the Lord. We're not going to miss the flower. We're not going to miss the oil. And we will see the rain coming until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So the blessing, the, 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 the rain represents the blessing that comes from eternity. And it talks about the, a symbolic representation of the rapture. 
brethren, what sustains us is not the things of this world, nor gold, nor silver, nor things of this world. These will not give us the sustain, the, the not going to preserve us. But what preserves us, what sustains us is the Word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will remain. You might be rich today, and you might break, and you might be broke today, and you might be rich tomorrow. So we are subject to the economies, to the fluctuations. But when we have the Lord as our shepherd, as our guide, the one that provided for us, like the Psalm 23, I shall not want. So she was in the very difficult times. Everything was missing. But in her house, in her life, nothing will be missing because the prophet will be present. Wherever, wherever God is present, we shall now want. tonight amen do not be embarrassed because when the Lord shows something it's not to embarrass you but it's to identify you the, the revelation talks about a man that 
went broke two times in Brazil and he moved to the United States and he thought he came to recover whatever he lost materially. He is here tonight and the Lord said to him, the, the Lord has brought him here. So the God per se brought you here personally. And the purpose to bring you here, to open the door so you can be here, is not to bless you only materially, but to give you a spiritual blessing, spiritual experience. And his plans is to save you in your household. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, and everything else will be added. So God will provide. Amen? This is the information that the Lord is showing for you. A woman in another gift looking to her house and the house of the members of her household and she noticed that her provisions were about to end. It was a few. It will be badly enough for one person. So she noticed that they will be going through difficult times, maybe going to famine. So she took her her kids and she walked errantly, being like prepared to even though to ask for alms, but as she passed by the door of the house of the Lord the church, she was invited to enter to participate in the service as there was a feast happening. And in this vision, the Lord showed a huge table with abundance of food and many things made with flour. It talks about the Word of God and everything was at her disposition to her and to her household. And she understood that that here will be the place that she should be because of the abundance of supplements, supplies. When we receive the invitation from the Lord and we accept it, the project of God in our lives, everything is easier. So the resource that you have for one more meal, the Lord is multiplying. There was a banquet prepared for her. And this is what the Lord has for your life. It's not a norms, it's not a something like a donation for one day, for one meal, no. Abundance. Something that's gonna keep you going for the eternal life. Spiritual food for your soul, whatever your family and you need, the presence of the Trinity, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand. Word, let's have a word of glorification. Thank you, Lord, for this mystery being revealed, for your word, for spiritual food that you have provided for us, for this day, special day in your presence. We are grateful for everything that you have done for us, for all the blessings that you have provided for every one of your servants, for the grace that you have prepared for us, everything that you have done and everything that you have prepared for us in the name of Jesus, for all the power, all the glory. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Lord, we bless your name for once again being your house, for the blessings of your Holy Spirit, for your plans, for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Bless your people, and especially we ask you for all the brothers, sisters that are in need of a blessing, their health, the, the sick, heal the sick and the ill, 
all the infirmities, rebuke from among us, be present with us, especially the services in the end of year. Bless your people returning to their house. Bless us during this week. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the consolations of the Holy Spirit and the love of God can be upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are approaching to the end of the service. You that came to visit us, we would like to tell you that we are at your service to pray for you, to assist you, remembering everyone, reminding everyone that in the 25th we're going to have a special service. It will be twenty sixth of December, the last Sunday of the year, we're gonna be participating of a banquet with the Lord, celebrating his death and resurrection. Thirty first, the vigil ten thirty, we're gonna start. You can participate invite people if you want for this very important moment invite everyone whoever you you want it there's no problem amen the the man that will participate in, in the vigil we're gonna meet them to take care of the logistics of the vigil and the ladies as well. So <laughs> the whole church. <laughs> Amen. So to all peace of the Lord, whoever desire a, pray a prayer or assistance, just give us a signal. Amen.